What's good? It's your boy, Trouble T-Roy. Hit, don't get hit, boxing talk. Back with another one. And it goes. So. <laughs> I ain't gonna even talk about Tank and Martin because that's not a fight that I cared about. But I will talk about David Benavidez versus Alexander Vostik. Yeah. David got a taste of his own medicine. I'm sorry. Y'all don't have to like me for saying it, but it's true. He finally fought, fought in, the, in the weight class that he should have been in years ago. Fought somebody his size, well, probably a little bigger than him, which is uh, a taste of your own medicine. Because um, Alexander, he's a pretty big dude for the weight, for 175. But guess what? If you wasn't, you know, breaking yourself down to 168 from 200 plus pounds for the last, what, 10 years? He said he's been at uh, 168. Maybe if you would went up a lot sooner when you should have to 175, maybe you would uh, have grown into the weight a lot better. It's not going to be as easy now. You know, you are still young, but break yourself down to a weight class from 200 pounds plus down to 168. That's a lot of wear and tear on your body. It's going to be harder as you get older for the, your strength to get there. Your strength probably will never reach where it probably could have been. But about the fight anyways. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you was doing good for about the first six, seven rounds. But you gassed out. Interesting. Threw everything that you had. You threw all the little, little flurry things that you do. You the hooks, everything. Went to the body. Everything. You did. You was doing good. You was looking good. But that power was not there. Because Alexander, he ate everything you had for him. I don't know. Somebody said they saw him hurt once. I think I might have saw him hurt once the whole fight. That man ate everything that you had. Everything. And you got tired. Because all that stuff you used to do in that 168 against smaller people didn't work against somebody your size. And I want to hear that, oh yeah, Alexander, he's big, he's big. Yeah, he is big. He's in the right, he's in his weight class. The right weight class. <laughs> like, all the excuses is coming out now. He hurt his hand. His hand was hurt. He hurt his hand during camp. I don't want to hear that bullshit. How you going to sit there the day before Talk about you're in the best shape ever. Your power is going to be, your strength is going to be there. Your speed is going to be better. Your conditioning or whatever is going to be even better. You thought you was going to go in there and knock him out. That's what you thought. You thought you was going to go in there and knock Alexander out. And finally, you met somebody of your size. And guess what? Those punches... Weren't doing nothing for him. Now people talk about the hand. 
I see him in the uh, post press or the post conference holding his hand. Oh my little hand, you know I heard it. You know the doctors, you know told me, you know it was gonna take me three months. I should I, I should have been fighting in one month. I started camping one month, but they said it was gonna take three months for it to heal. But I was like, no, I'm fighting. Like that's well, you're stupid. <laughs> If the doctor telling you your hand ain't going to be ready for a fight for it, you need an extra, you need three months for it to heal properly, but you decide to fight anyways, that's on you. I ain't going to call you stupid. I shouldn't be calling people names, but I mean, that's he on my nerves anyways, but it's not an excuse if you decided to fight anyways. All your fans, oh, well, his hand was hurt. His hand was hurt. Like, fuck out of here. If I want to hear that when that man literally admitted he decided to fight knowing that his hand was not in the best shape for a fight, he thought it was going to be easy work. That's why he took the fight anyways. He did take Alexander serious. He thought he was going to go in there to 175 and just dominate because he's the monster. He's the Mexican monster. He's a monster. I didn't see no monster in that ring. That monster best have went back under the bed or something because I didn't see a monster in that ring. You know, I'm just saying. So I want to hear all the excuses. Oh, it was his first fight at 175. It's only his first fight. Canelo went in there and knocked a, a, a champion out at his first fight at 175. So what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what are we talking about? This is, these dudes make all these excuses for this dude. And I've been saying for years, he don't want to go up to 175. Now what is he doing at the press conference or the, the post conference? Oh, uh, you know, I got to decide where I want to stay at 175. We'll go back down to 168 and Canelo and blah, blah, blah. Huh? It's like, wait, hold up. Didn't you at the press conference say that you was going to be staying at 175? Because you thought you knew Canelo don't want your want the action, right? And there was nothing else for you to do at one uh, one sixty eight, right? Oh, you didn't you didn't felt what it really feel like to be in the ring at your real weight class, and now you oh you know you know one sixty eight and have to decide we're gonna have to you know think like wow <laughs> my 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 how things change huh? And you know what's so funny about the fight? All these guys on Twitter and everywhere else talk about, oh, man, he did great the whole fight. He was, he looked excellent the whole fight. Like, though, you know when a, a fighter ain't looking good, when the commentator's energy go from one to a, a whole nother. They're in the, like, second, third round, Benavides threw one of these crazy combos like he always does. And one of the guys, one of the commentators said, Benavidez got more combos, more combinations than the Chinese restaurant menu. I'm like, y'all are on his jock way too hard. Like, whoa, you guys are doing way too much. I mean, they was talking Benavidez up like crazy. The crowd going crazy for the first like six rounds. <laughs> They're just going crazy, commentating, and crowd going crazy. Then all of a sudden, Benavidez started backing up to the ropes. In the last few rounds, you know, it was around six, seven, seven and on. Benavidez back to the ropes. Eight, nine rounds. Eight, nine rounds. Now his mouth is open because he's breathing hard. He's tired. He's backing up into the ropes again. Uh... I mean, and the commentators, you know, the crowd ain't 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 active like they was before. And the commentators is there like, yeah, I don't know, I ain't never seen I ain't never seen Benavidez like this. 
Like, so you can't sit here and tell me, oh, he looked excellent the whole fight. He won every. Like, the scorecards were bullshit, that's for sure. But <laughs> it's like, you know, when somebody, all you motherfuckers sitting there talking shit, like he looked so excellent the whole fight and everything, you know you're lying to yourself. You're trying to convince yourself because you feel, you feel a way about the way he really looked. And you know what's so funny about the fight? All these guys on Twitter and everywhere else talk about, oh, man, he did great the whole fight. He was, he looked excellent the whole fight. Like, though, you know when a, a fighter ain't looking good, when the commentator's energy go from one to a, a whole nother. They're in the, like, second, third round, Benavides threw one of these crazy combos like he always does. And one of the guys, one of the commentators said, Benavidez got more combos, more combinations than the Chinese restaurant menu. I'm like, y'all are on his jock way too hard. Like, whoa, you guys are doing way too much. I mean, they was talking Benavidez up like crazy. The crowd going crazy for the first like six rounds. <laughs> They're just going crazy, commentating, and the crowd going crazy. Then all of a sudden, Benavidez started backing up to the ropes. In the last few rounds, you know, it was around six, seven, seven and on. Benavidez back to the ropes. Eight, nine rounds. Eight, nine rounds. Now his mouth is open because he's breathing hard. He's tired. He's backing up into the ropes again. Uh... I mean, and the commentators, you know, the crowd ain't 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 active like they was before. And the commentators is there like, yeah, I don't know, I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen Benavidez like this. Like, so you can't sit here and tell me, oh, he looked excellent the whole fight. He won every, like, the scorecards were bullshit. That's for sure. But <laughs> it's like you know when somebody. All you motherfuckers sitting there talking shit like he looks so excellent the whole fight and everything. You know you're lying to yourself. You're trying to convince yourself because you feel you feel a way about the way he really looked. Like I mean, hey, I mean we'll see. You doubt you talk about you you was done. I thought you was done chasing Canelo. I thought you was done chasing. Now you talk about you know Canelo. You know you like now he back in your mouth. <laughs> like what's going on bro I mean the pressure's on now the pressure is on now I mean you looked very human in there at 175 I guess uh, what 37 year old yeah, I'm not taking that away from Alexander Dude's always been a good fighter. Only man to stop him was Better Beef. But Better Beef dropped him three times and stopped him in the 10th round. You could even hurt the man. Give it, this was, uh, uh, what, five, six years ago or something like that? But that was a, that was a champion, Alexander Rostick. That was a champion that Better Beef fought. So you're telling me <laughs> you think you're going to beat Better Beef. He thinks he's going to beat Better Beef or Bavol. But he could even hurt Alexander. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Oh, it was his first fight. It was his first fight. Uh, his hand was hurt. And, and, <laughs> and he's sitting there talking about he's doubting whether he wants. He doesn't know if he wants to stay at 175 or go back down to 168. You're the ones, the fans, you guys are the ones trying to defend him. He ain't really defending himself. I don't think he, he I don't think he felt good about being at 175 against a real 175 pounder when he's been so used to being at 168 fighting smaller people. People smaller than him. I don't think he liked being in there in that situation at 175. And I'm sorry. <laughs> If you didn't like it against Alexander Vostick, I don't think you're going to like fighting Bivol. Mr. Yeah, I sparred Bivol and, you know, uh, you know, 
I gave him that work and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. Because <laughs> I wonder, y'all, y'all, these boxers, these American boxers, these American boxers and these American fans want to brag over sparring more than they brag about the actual fights. More than they ask for the actual fights to happen. Motherfuckers will sit here and brag about about Benavidez beating up Bivol in a sparring session, but ain't nobody asking for that fight to happen. I, I, I bet y'all really ain't asking for it now. I don't know how many people I've seen talking about Canelo need to fight Benavidez after the, after this last fight, after Benavidez's last fight this past Saturday. Everybody talking about Canelo again. What happened to uh? What happened to Benavidez fighting the winner of uh Bivol and Better Beef? I ain't seen nobody talking about that. I thought that's what was supposed to happen. <laughs> it's like, come on, what are we talking about here? I'm sorry, Benavidez, I'm sorry. He's a good fighter, but he ain't that guy. He still ain't proved it. He ain't no monster. He ain't proved it to me. Somebody got mad at me because I said, I don't think he's a monster. Well, Mike Tyson called him the Mexican monster. I said, I don't give, I don't give a fuck what Mike Tyson said. I don't have to agree with him. I still don't think he a monster. And he definitely ain't showed no monster yesterday. Or on Saturday. I didn't see no monster. I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> if that's a monster, then monsters have got real... They ain't too scary in 2024 if that's a monster. <laughs> I don't think too many people going to be scared of monsters after that. <laughs> the only monster I know is a new way. Anyways, I've been bouncing from here to there on this shit. I'm done. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. It's your boy, Trouble T-Roy. Hit, don't get hit, box and talk. I'll be easy and all that good shit. Peace.